Hi, brothers and sisters. So I want to come on and share a dream with you. Um, please excuse me. I haven't been feeling well. <coughs> um, and plus, I've been crying about... I was watching Pastor Tim Henderson's video, um, the testimony about Nick and the homeless man that he was helping named Archie. And just the account of... Uh, Archie going into these different church buildings and asking for help and they were turning him away. It just broke my heart, you guys. I've been sitting here for like 15 minutes. I mean, it just struck my heart. Maybe it's just my <laughs> pregnant hormones, but that was just terrible. And uh, And then the one lady that did feed him and have mercy upon him stuck soap in his sandwich <laughs> what is wrong with people it's just terrible and me and John were talking about this last night we had walked into a Walgreens and you can just feel it from people they don't want to look at you. They don't want to say hello. They, people just avoid, they walk past each other. Like they live in a different world. It's just very odd. It's, it's not like even how it was 10 years ago. Um, it's like we live in this weird drone robot brainwashed society and, and people walk around in hatred and fear and so I was like, we walked out of the Walgreens and I told John, I said, you know, the Bible says that in the last days, the love of many would wax cold. And he was agreeing with me. Once you have those eyes to see the spiritual eyes, you're looking through the Holy Spirit. You just see everything so differently. But yeah, that struck my heart. It's like <clears throat> Babylon. These churches are part of Babylon. And they don't even know what the truth is. They're, they're in prison. They don't know that they can't measure up through the law. They need the blood of Christ to atone for their sins. And they're like whitewashed tombs. They clean themselves on the outside. They stick the soap in the sandwich for for a homeless person. But on the inside, they're they're black. They're dead. And they think the law makes them righteous. And then they point fingers and they try to hold other people to the standard of the law. But they themselves do not enter in. And they keep others from entering in to the kingdom because they're, they're Pharisees and it, it just makes me upset and it sickens me when people try to say that us grace people, the people that live by faith alone and, and Jesus Christ and the blood atonement alone are the Pharisees. It, that is lies from the devil. It, it makes me sick and they're spreading false gospel and lies and twisting and distorting the truth of the scripture. And I, I've had many, many, many dreams still. The Lord has given me dreams mainly about people that are on YouTube and they are lying to people. And the Lord has shown me their heart issues. And the Lord has shown me that they themselves do not enter in. And they are keeping others from entering in. They are bringing death with their tongue. And it's so heartbreaking 
because the truth is right there in their face, but they've been so brainwashed and they can't see it. And in one dream, I was shown a craft booth lady with all these other women that had craft booths. But around this craft boothing type swap meet craft fair, there was a prison fence with razor wire. You were like locked in this prison with these craft booth ladies. These people were. And this lady, <clears throat> I'm not going to name her name, but she does, does crafts, had this desk in her craft booth. And, um, she had this stack of typed out papers, like a book, like a novel she had written. And she had, um, they were all nice and neat and typed out and I'm looking at them and she gets up and she calls everybody, all these women out of their craft booths. And she starts to speak about what she had just typed out from her own mind, her own thoughts. And she's feeding these women a bunch of baloney. That's exactly the phrase, a bunch of baloney. And these women are just soaking it in. And, and the way she was speaking to these women was... Like, here's my material, and here's what I've typed up, and, and this is what it is. And it's, she's talking about the gospel. And I knew <clears throat> that at the bottom of the deck of that stack of paper she had typed up and put together of that material, that grace and the blood atonement on the cross was the afterthought of her little novel that she typed up. And it made me so sad. It's it, it, like, again, it struck my heart, but the way she was presenting or relating this material to these women, they looked confused and they looked hurt because she was coming at them. Like I couldn't hear what she was saying, but the reactions, she was so full of pride <laughs> and the reactions on these women's faces was they were not receiving the truth. Some of them said, amen, sister. And I knew they were deceived. And some of them put their heads down like, what? That's not right. And um, one of them said, and I looked out past the chain link fence, this prison she had them in, this little crafting prison. And I saw a school with a bunch of happy kids. They were playing on the, the schoolyard. And one of the women put her head down and she said, because she was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't live up to the law. Where is the grace? Where is the blood atonement? <clears throat> Where is that Jesus died for me? And all my sins are covered. I can't hold up to the law. I can't do this. Because this craft lady was feeding them baloney. And acting, but she was coming to them like um, apologetic almost. Um, beseeching them. Trying to reach out to them like the good the good craft lady, but I could see right through it. She was deceiving them and, and some of them knew. And the lady said, I can't do this anymore. You're piling too many things upon me that we're not supposed to bear. Jesus already bore those things on the cross. And one lady said, I'm just going back out into the world. Those were her words. And I said, or I thought, I, I had this thought, I said, it's, pro it's probably safer out there. The, and then the dream ended. It's probably safer out there because 
the reason I thought that was because anywhere to get away from this, these lies and get to grace, get under grace, because if you're under the law, grace, you're not under grace. You've fallen from grace. If you're under a church, that's going to give you a sandwich full of soap. You better run. And I had other dreams about the same person where me and my husband, we are drinking the new wine, which is Jesus Christ. And that craft lady's just looking at us with my husband who represents Jesus and scowling at us, giving us the evil eye. She could not stand it. She could not take it. And um, she thought that my husband was that I don't know but she didn't like it she does she hates grace they hate grace they hate that the gospel is so simple they hate that they can't stay in their puffed up pride in their puffed up flesh look at me hang more tassels on your cloak you know uh I've never sinned like this person I'm so perfect, walking around in their pride and their leaven, the leaven of the Pharisees, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump, puffed up in their pride, but they don't realize that Jesus is the new bread. He it is the blood atonement. It is, we are saved by faith, by grace through faith, you guys, by our faith in Jesus Christ. He took death and hung it on the cross. He took all the wrath that God had stored up for us, even when we were under the law, and nailed it to the tree, nailed it to a cross. He became sin for us. Who He knew no sin and died on the cross so that those that believe upon him, because now it's a new covenant, can have everlasting life. But you have to change your mind. And the Lord has shown me this woman and many others have not truly repented. And you say, well, what do you mean they haven't repented? They're, 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 they're saying, God, forgive me a thousand times a day. Repentance. Unrepentance is unbelief. And that's what the Lord spoke to me out loud. You're repenting of your unbelief. If you don't believe that Jesus paid for every sin on that cross and you're not accepting his blood atonement and his sacrifice to cover your sins, you're in unbelief. If you're still trying to work your way to heaven, you're in unbelief. You do not believe. You're, you're an enemy of the cross. If you're trying to walk around puffed up in your flesh and look at me and yeah, Jesus died on the cross, but... You know, we, he didn't, he couldn't do it all. It wasn't good enough. You know, you're in unbelief. You're in, you're unrepentant. And salvation is just so easy. You just reach out and grab that free gift. It's just a free gift. And now what the hard part is, 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 is getting all the brainwashing out that you might have learned and been instilled with for years that you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to be a certain way and you have to, they twist. That's what the devil likes to do. He takes words and little words and twists them and changes their meanings. But it just makes me sad, you guys. But let me get onto the stream. I didn't even plan on sharing that, but I hope it helps somebody and they understand what I'm saying. So the dream was my husband, he hardly ever dreams, but the Lord told me very early on that, that he would start to have dreams. The Lord told me in a dream that my husband would start to have dreams that would coincide, that would confirm prophetically my dreams. And I woke up. And that's what's been happening ever since.
So he said, he, we woke up in the morning. He said, oh, I had such a beautiful dream, the most beautiful dream. And I said, well, what was it? And he said that, he said, in the dream, you went into labor early. And he said, you were sitting in the reclining chair and we didn't even have time to get to the hospital. And I had to deliver the baby. And he said, the baby came exactly 37 days early. 37 and he said, I, he said, the reason why I know this is from the Lord, because I don't remember numbers in my dreams. I don't remember uh, things written down and stuff unless it's from the Lord. And I've noticed this too. And uh, so I, I delivered the baby 37 days early. There was no time to get to the hospital. It was unexpected. We did not expect it. It was suddenly... Um, Instead of a girl, because I'm pregnant with a girl in real life, instead of a girl, it was a boy. And uh, we were so happy. We were just filled with joy. And he said, afterward, our family, our family in real life wasn't there. But he said, it was my family, my family, my coworkers from over at work had come. And they were helping us out with the baby which is really weird because that would never happen in real life. <clears throat> so this isn't like a literal thing that's going to happen with me, you guys. This is this is spiritual. This is talking about the rapture. This is talking about the baby being born. And so then they, they came and it was like a potluck, like a feast. And they were bringing food and gifts and, and uh, you know, having a barbecue and... <laughs> all this food and everybody was celebrating and like it was their baby too, you know? And, uh, John says, or somebody, I can't remember. Somebody said, did you bring the Alpine hot dogs? And someone goes, you bet. Or yeah, you know, uh, of course we did. And everybody was just happy and, and joyous and um, he said it was just a beautiful dream. So uh, 37 days early, this is, this is talking about the, the rapture, the baby being born. Um, the rapture is going to be earlier than we thought, I guess, unexpected. It's going to be a surprise, you guys. And let me... I looked in Strong's Concordance in number 37 in the Greek. It means to make holy, that is, purify or consecrate, venerate, hallow, be holy, sanctify, sanctify, hallow, be holy. And um, that's the rapture. That's the glorified bodies. Because none of us are holy in our flesh right now. You know, we've been, we've been made uh, sanctified and holy on the inner man. But our flesh is dying every day. So, and then I Alpine. So I'm looking at these these keys in the dream, the names and the numbers and things. Alpine is a plant native to mountain districts, often suitable for growing in rock gardens. Okay, and in other dreams, the Lord has shown me that I'm growing uh, a garden with rock borders. Jesus is the rock. He's the rock, he's the cornerstone, he's the mountain. We are the plants, we are the flowers, we are the trees. Okay. Uh, plant native to alpine or boreal regions that is often grown for ornament. Uh, pertaining to on or part of a lofty mountain, very high, elevated, growing on mountains above the limit of tree growth. Alpine plants. Alpine means ex existing in or relating to mountains. Relating to high mountain areas mountain ranges. Sometimes Jesus comes to me as I call him a mountain man. He looks like the, uh, you know, he has the beard and he just looks like to me in my dreams, I associate him with somebody that lives on a high, very, 
uh, lofty type mountain, a majestic mountain man. <laughs> I know people laugh at that, but. So I think that the stream is very encouraging because I know a lot of us are getting wary. We've been doing this for a long time. Um, me, not as long as others, but uh, it takes its toll on you. And uh, I just believe that the rapture is going to happen soon. I was told out loud by the voice of God very early on. Um, it was so amazing. I heard the tribulation is about to begin. And I woke up, and in the same week, I heard, um, Behold, I come quickly. And I woke up, and, uh, you know, I, I asked, I prayed before I went to sleep. I said, Lord, will I be raptured? Because I wasn't sure. I, I, I was still in law, so I was still in fear. I, I hadn't entered into the rest of the Lord yet, of His grace. And I asked him, Lord, will I be raptured? And I, as soon as I fell asleep, I was in the presence of the Lord. And I heard a mighty voice say, yes. So I was like, wow, because this was because being brought up in church, they, churches, they don't talk about this stuff. Not back then. Um, I never really heard of the rapture before. So, uh, but these things are coming. God is coming. Um, the rapture is going to happen. If you don't know Jesus Christ, if you've never ca called out to him, do it today. Don't wait one more second. Don't let any more time go by before you call upon the name of Jesus Christ. And it doesn't have to be in any special way, just your way. And you say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe that you became the sacrificial lamb. I believe you took all my sins away from me and nailed it to the cross. And I, I just believe in you, Lord, and I have faith in you, Lord, today. And, and however you want to say it, and he will come in and sup with you. He will come in to your life and and manifest himself. He will save you. He will, that nanosecond, that very instant, he seals you with the Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit comes and it lives inside of you and you are made justified and sanctified and righteous by his holy blood, by his Holy Spirit and his blood that was shed for you on the cross. And don't let any man lie to you and tell you that you have to earn this or earn that or keep this, or do this to keep that salvation. It's a lie. My God is more than able, and he do, whatever he says he's going to do, he does it. Don't let anybody lie to you. I don't care how holy or whitewashed they look. I don't care what uh, the appearance of things. You have to see through spiritual eyes who these people really are. Always, always, always listen to God. Always, always, always uh, search scripture. Don't listen. Be careful who you listen to. Don't just listen to someone because they look nice and and they they speak words of that sound righteous, but really they bring a sort a sort of death across your face. I fell into that trap. It was a trap. They, they look like ministers of righteousness, but really they're ministers of death because they don't tell you the truth. They have not obtained the knowledge, the saving knowledge of the truth. All right. I love you, brothers and sisters. And uh, be good to people. Tell them the truth. Help people. Don't feed them soap sandwiches. That's terrible. That's not, that's wicked. That's not God. That's not God. The Lord loves people. God is love. All right. God bless you guys, and I love you.